Hey, this is Dr. T. Welcome to um, my computer and my living room. And here I've got some pictures of graduated cylinders. And I want to talk about how you read these, how you get the information out of them. Uh, and this applies not just to graduated cylinders, but other glassware with marks for volume. So things like beakers, although you never really trust the marks on a beaker, uh, or even volumetric flasks and whatnot, which all have, you know, one mark. So some things I'm going to say don't apply to them because there's literally only the one mark. Uh, but this is going to be for our graduated uh, glassware. Uh, okay, so I've got myself a graduated cylinder over here. Uh, this is 100 mil, uh, so you can see the large lines. Those have the uh, numbers on them, so that's the 50, the 60, the 50. You can't see the line for it's cut off. But the 60, 70, 80, 90 is up there, 100 is you know, cut off as well. By the way, this plastic thing, that's kind of like a bumper in case the thing falls over. Maybe save it from breaking. Okay, so I've got my camera and I've made sure it was nice and level with the air-water interface. Uh, so I'm slide over here. The reason I did that is because it's actually a three-dimensional thing and I don't want any weird parallax issues. So what I'm going to do is level that out and you know what, I want to zoom in, get a good view of this. So for starters, you'll notice it looks a little fun funny going on over here. And what we're having is a bit of refraction issues. This is called a meniscus and this is very common. Uh, what's happening is the water is attracted to the glass. So the water is actually pulling against gravity and crawling up the sides of the glass. So down here, you've got air, glass, water, glass, air, and it's fairly straightforward. Above it, it's air, glass, air, glass, air. But down here, you've got a little bit more complication going on. Air, glass, water, air, water, glass, air kind of scenario. And that gets a lot of weird, uh, you know, refraction stuff. Now, of course, the size of this meniscus uh, is actually pretty large compared to the size of the marks. Uh, so what we've done as a society is that we've said, okay, for scientific glassware, um, under normal circumstances, and there's weird exceptions to everything, but under normal circumstances, we're going to say it's going to be calibrated so that the bottom of the meniscus, this down part right here, is where we read from. So that means that this line up here is at, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that'd be 75. This line here is 75 if, 75 milliliters if, the bottom meniscus is right on that line. You'll notice it's not. So, okay, so this is 74, that's 75. I count the meniscus, count the lines, things felt pretty straightforward. By the way, these longer lines, see how this one's kind of a little bit longer? That's usually a counting aid, uh, definitely useful. Okay, so I'm in between these two lines. Now I could just say, okay, it looks close to 74, I'm going to call it 74, but that's actually throwing away good data. There's only two sig figs, uh, and I can get three. Uh, you know, I, honestly, this is 74 and a half, a little bit less. I say being 74.4, and that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say this is 74.4. I've got uh, the two digits with my tick marks, and then a third one, which is my estimated digit, and that's uh, very valuable. That's still pretty legitimate. I mean, this is definitely within dozens, if you know, not a little bit more microliters of 74.4 uh, milliliters. You know, maybe a, a hundred or so microliters, you know, a tenth of a milliliter, but you know, that's pretty close. So I've got that and that's good data. So I'm going to record that. So I'll say this is 74.4. Okay, so here I have a second graduate cylinder. This is a smaller one. This is a 25 milliliter graduate cylinder. This one's made of plastic. Uh, you've got a couple different types of plastic. I'm not sure which model this particular is. Probably shouldn't be wiggling to death, should I? My bad. Uh, but anyways, so this guy is made of a plastic, uh, and this one's not nearly as attracting to water. It's more hydrophobic uh, than the water is. So if we zoom in, we'll notice that meniscus is, it's still there, but it is really small. I mean, I, honestly, you could debate with that statement whether or not it's still there. Uh, so that's a really tiny meniscus. Okay, so this is a little bit harder to read. The camera did not like this one as well, but you got the 25 mark there. You've got the 20 mark over here. So, okay, how many lines do we have? Well, it's one, two, three. Notice how there's this alternating size. I think that's going to be important. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so these are going in, there's ten increments, so it's going only five milliliters. So these are not going by milliliter, they're going by half milliliter. The slightly larger ones are going by milliliters, and then the slightly smaller ones are going by halves. Okay, uh, so first thing to catch is, you know, you may not always have, you know, nice powers of tens for your lines. It's nice when you do, but hey, this isn't bad. Halves aren't bad. Um, 
yeah, so I'm going up here. Okay, so that's 20.5, 21, 21 and a half, 22, 22 and a half, 23. And to be honest, I mean, that's pretty much right on the line. I think my camera was a little crooked. Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah, my camera was a little straighter. I think this would really look nice and straight. Uh, and this is right on the line. So if I'm recording this, I'd say it's 23, but I wouldn't just say 23. I want to communicate to everyone that it is right on the line. So I'd say 23.0. Um, now, if I was, you know, if the meniscus was down here or something, uh, you know, I wouldn't try and add a full, you know, 1 to 10 because, you know, this is the 0. 0.5, you know, 22.5, that's the 23. So I'd probably still only do three sig figs because I don't think you could trust any more than that. But, you know, this would definitely help you. So, you know, there would be 20... This is two and a half, there'd be you know, 22.7, 22.6, 22.8, you know, my point is probably in the wrong spot, but you get the idea. Uh, so yeah, different graduate cylinder. Uh, choice of what you make them out of, or which one you use, plastic versus glass. Obviously plastic's not gonna break if you drop it. Uh, you see those a lot in teaching labs because, you know, some people drop stuff. Um, they're cheaper, uh, but they're a little harder to read and some solvents will just kind of dissolve the graduated cylinder, which is, you know, a problem. Uh, so it does depend, you know, it's what you're working with, um, how much you're wanting to spend. You know, they are a little bit cheaper. This is just injected molded. Uh, but, you know, it, it works fine. Uh, so, yeah, on to the next. Okay, so here's a third graduated cylinder. This is a 10 milliliter one. Uh, by the way, you know, uh, a couple points on the markings out here. So obviously this is the brand... Uh, it's made in the United States. Uh, TD stands for to deliver. So you fill this up, you dump it out, and there's a little bit that'll be left over. That's okay. That's intended. So this is calibrated, assuming it leaves a couple of drops. Uh, now, obviously, if there's a lot left over, you know, there can be a problem. And if it's something really thick, then, you know, you've got a little bit of accuracy going on. 20 degrees C, uh, so that implies it's running at 20 degrees C. So it's calibrated for things being at 20 degrees C. Obviously, when temperatures go up, things expand. When it goes down, it contracts. And as such, you know, if it's going to change size, it's going to change size. This is calibrated at 20 degrees Celsius, which is a slightly less than room temperature. I mean, it's definitely it's room temperature. It's just kind of a chilly room temperature. Okay, so I'm looking at this one first thing off, so I notice. Uh, okay, so it's glass, so it's got a meniscus. Actually, it's got a pretty dramatic meniscus. Uh, the smaller the graduate cylinder, the, the tighter the internal diameter ID is, the more dramatic your meniscus is going to be. Now, if I zoom in, once again, it's a dramatic meniscus. Really important that I read from the bottom of this one. And the bottom is probably going all the way down to there. Other thing I noticed, one, two, three, four, five. There's only five tick marks here. That means each one's every two. So that's, you know, 8.2. There's the eight. Uh, actually, I think that's the eight. That's the back end, the reflection from behind. The camera is a little high on that eight. Uh, that's one of the downsides of going all the way around. You can see both ends. But if you just kind of move your head a little bit, uh, you see which one's which. Anyway, so that, that's the eight. That's the 8.2, 8.4, 8.6, 8.8, 9. Um, with these guys, it gets a little bit like, okay, I think I can get three significant figures, but uh, it's a little bit trickier. Uh, so this one is, you know, if these were, you know, ones, I'd, I'd probably put that at the halfway or the 0.4, but obviously they're not. So halfway would be at 8.5, because that's 8.4, that's 8.6. So definitely an 8.5, I could probably argue an 8.48 or something. Um, that estimated digit is now definitely a little bit wonkier than we normally would like, but it's still legit. So I think I can still get three sig figs, but... I would not be relying on that last significant figure. Uh, significant figures are actually not the perfect way uh, to describe accuracy and precision. Well, precision, I should say. Um, uh, there are other approaches. They're just kind of a nice, straightforward approach uh, that doesn't involve any, you know, advanced algebra or calculus. Uh, it, algebra, not really calculus, but, you know, it's definitely simpler. Okay, so we've got this one, a couple of warning signs. Once again, make sure you pull from the bottom um, obviously, you'd be off by you know, half a mil practically, isn't it? This is because it's big. And um, the other point is, you know, careful on those tick marks. They, they're not always ones. Okay, last graduated cylinder. I have photos for you tonight. Um, and this has got a little bit more going on. So this is a larger graduated cylinder. So this is a 600 milliliter line. That's a 700. So this is a one liter graduated cylinder. Once again, it's cut off on the top. Um, 
because I'm trying to get the camera nice in line with the meniscus. Probably could have done a little lower, truth be told. Okay, so uh, let's look at increments. Uh, it's got the same pattern. You generally see 10 tick marks. It's the most popular, but we just saw the graduate zone where there was not 10 tick marks. So you can't rely on it. Notice how the meniscus is definitely thinner. Uh, that's the thicker or the, the larger your internal diameter is, uh, generally the thinner or the, the, the shorter your meniscus. Uh, it is still glass though. Uh, so as I'm going up, uh, one, two, three, four, five. No, so that one's bigger. I know the photo is not right. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, it's a longer one. Okay, so these are going to be by ten. So that's six, ten, six, twenty, six, thirty, six, forty. Once again, bottom of the meniscus. That's six, fifty. But I'd, I'd say like six, forty-two, six, forty-three uh, for this one. Um, you know, so get a nice uh, three sig figs. By the way, if it was right on the line, I'd want to make sure I put my decimal point on. So if it was right on this line here, it would be six, forty, and I would definitely want to say six, forty point. You know, to clarify that 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 X actually is three significant figures. Uh, now, a couple other things to look at. Notice how I've got some spots on this one. This is just one I pulled off the shelf. Um, water droplets clinging to your stuff. That's generally a telltale sign it needs a bath. Um, that's usually dirt particles that are stuck there. The water is hanging onto that, uh, and that will affect as well as bubbles. So I think there's a couple of bubbles in there. Uh, obviously, little bubbles aren't going to affect you much, but you know they are taking up space and they're not your liquid. So uh, with this guy, he probably needs a bath, truth be told. Uh, he was just kind of sitting on the shelf for quite a while. And you know how that happens. If stuff just sits there, dust, you know, dust happens. Uh, so with that said, um, enjoy your measurements. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you next time.